you screamed at a lady, you bugging the fuck out, homie. Yo, you nah. bugging out. You got shit all over your face. You bugging out. You high. You snacked. I understand. But you bugging out, homie. I'm not worried about no. I'm not talking about no drugs. I'm saying you high weed. I'm not saying you on no drugs. You don't know, see how she ran out? But you don't understand how they treat you. I understand what you said. Females, homie. Look, females. So if they if they females, they need to talk like females. Why is she talking like she gangster? Yo, you going? What you going to hit the female? I'm not going to touch the female. So why you scaring the female? Oh, you can come let this nigga do that, man. You, 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 you somewhere you supposed to be on a big major platform. Oh, we good, but bro. You keep doing, you keep so looking at like, 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 No, bro. We straight, bro. I'm gonna keep telling you, bro. We good, bro. Body language. I'm looking you dead in your face. Your body language is like extra. Extra. Like extra. I understand, but you security. But your body language is extra, like flago. Like, that's just me, bro. It's all love, bro. We good. Okay. Right. More and more victims of Diddy's alleged abuse are coming forward every day. And in the latest development, rapper Soulja Boy claims that he's been sitting on a major secret regarding the music mogul too, and it is not pretty. That's what I'm talking about. We ain't right going no back. I see you, Tom. What up? To preface, let's just say that Sean P. Diddy Combs ain't the guy everybody thought he was. Now, the founder of Bad Boy Entertainment claimed he wanted to make the industry more inclusive for minority communities. That has been his apparent goal since day one. What are your thoughts on everything going on with, with Diddy right now? I think, I think when it comes to that situation, man, I think we shouldn't focus on the individual. We should focus on the issue. Because I think what happens a lot of times is, you know, because of the celebrity, we get lost talking. We get lost in talking about the celebrity and not talking about the actual issue. The issue is domestic violence. Yep, right. The issue is exactly what I just said about, you know, men not going to do the proper work on themselves and they're dealing with a lot of pain and a lot of hurt and unhealed trauma and they're projecting that pain and that that hurt on the other people the issue is patriarchy right because as long as you have a system where men feel superior to women and they're dealing with that pain and they're dealing with that hurt mm -hmm. they're going to project that you know, we're going to continue to project that onto our women. So I think those are the issues that we should be discussing as opposed to talking about the individual. And we tend to do that a lot as a society. Yeah. We get lost in the celebrity of things as opposed to, okay, what are we here for? Because it's clickbait. Yeah. Yeah. It's clickbait. Like, yeah. Diddy, yeah. Diddy brings the engagement. But right now, as I'm talking, there's a woman out there getting beat up yeah. by yeah. a man, yeah. right? And she's not going to get no news coverage. Nobody's yeah. going to talk about her. We should, we should say the name of Cassie, the survivor of the domestic yeah. violence. Yes. Let's talk more about her. Absolutely. Well. Just talk about the issue, Pierre. Let's talk about the Here. actual yeah. issue and yeah. not the individual. But latest developments in the Diddy saga have revealed that it was the furthest thing from what he actually did. Diddy is right now, uh, as we speak, at a hospital in Miami. And he is there because his mother had to be rushed to that hospital on Wednesday. From what we are told from our sources uh, connected to Diddy, his mother started experiencing chest pains at some point on Wednesday. Uncertain at this point exactly what time, but at some point Wednesday, she was having these pains and made the decision that she needed to go to a hospital, to the emergency room. She lives in Miami, not with Diddy. She has her own residence, but she went to the hospital and was getting treatment there. Um, Diddy did make it to the hospital, uh, went there to be by her side, and she is still in the hospital. We're told that she's gonna be there at least until tomorrow. Pro probably for observation. And, observation and, 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 and testing and that is going on. We don't know. But I think you guys are probably thinking exactly what we're thinking, she, which is it just takes its toll. She's on an 83-year-old woman. That's right. You got to think like you can't go. She can't go online. She can't go out in public without someone mentioning the Diddy allegations. You know, we know that they're very close. You know, a few years back, Diddy gave her a million dollars and a Bentley. So you know, it's it's understandable that he would rush to her side in Miami. The way this source described it to us is that she's. As you would expect, she's 83 and in the hospital having these chest pains. She's afraid of what's going on um, and that she really wanted him to be by her side and that he's sort of comforting, comforting her through this. Um, but the other thing that we we're told is that she, the doctors are still doing tests, but she has said to the doctors that she believes that this is all related to the stress of, uh, you know, as Trent said, opening everything she looks at is about allegations yeah. that her son it's more is than more than believable. Yeah, I mean, it seems, yeah, these are the kind of the ripple effects 
of something like this on family and whatnot? She was really, the, you know, for the longest time after the raids, uh, when he was just staying at his house in Miami, she was one of the only people we saw hanging out with him. Mm -hmm. uh, there would be photos of them sort of hanging out around his house. Good or bad, she's yeah. always been by his side, you know? Like, you know, he's had a 30-year run in hip-hop, and, you know, she's been right there. Hi there, this is Dami Rock calling in from New York. And it's really sad that Diddy's mom is suffering in this way because stress is a killer. And so it's quite clear that, you know, this is just compounded with everything that's happened with Diddy. But, you know, we have to also have the compassion because I know there's a lot of people out there saying, well, you know, this is karma. But let's be real. You know, everyone loves their mom. And in this case, you know, it's all about the mom. He had Kanye and his mom. Right. Like and how he suffered in the aftermath of his mom being taken ill. And so we've got to look at like what this is going to mean for um, Diddy's mental state. And also, let's ask the question, what is um, Biggie Small's mom? What could she be thinking at this moment? Christopher Wallace's mom, Viola to Wallace, who thought that Sean, who he's known to as from, you know, his mom and Jay-Z only, they know him as Sean. She thought Sean was really, um, you know, his son's good friend. But it's somehow right now, it seems like that was not the case. So yeah, I, you're I right badly about stress. You are yeah, right about stress. I feel stress. badly for her because yeah. she's, she, as far as we know, an innocent victim. She's collateral damage. Collateral damage, yeah. exactly. I just had a question. I'm just trying to tell all these young cats out there, trying to come up, you know, like, where do you think they gotta go to? From your point of view, you know what I'm saying? What is the best advice you could give them? Because I'll be telling them, like, my best advice is they got to do it their whole new way, a different way, like, like, like they're from another planet. But coming from you, coming from the man of, of, of men right now, tell them something. Tell them something good. I mean, first of all, you want to stay away from these diddy bop motherfuckers. You motherfuckers dancing all on the motherfucking stage and shit. They want your ass. You call them astronauts, so be afraid. Be very afraid. You really ain't built for the game. Uh, something. Something. Something no, like that. No, we trying to be famous. Like, you gonna run into a motherfucker like that. Here is everyone named in the P. Diddy sexual abuse lawsuit. Firstly, the lawsuit mentions Jennifer Lopez. The lawsuit claims that while Jennifer Lopez was dating P. Diddy, she brought a gun and gave it to Diddy in the 1999 nightclub shooting. It also claims that Diddy forced his then artist, Shy, to claim responsibility for the shooting. Next, the lawsuit specifically mentions Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex. It reads in part, quote, Mr. Combs was known for throwing the best parties. Affiliation with and or sponsorship of Mr. Combs, sex trafficking parties, granted legitimacy and access to celebrities such as famous athletes, political figures, artists, musicians, and international dignitaries like British royal Prince Harry. Lastly, there is Cuba Gooding Jr. The lawsuit claims that Gooding Jr. sexually assaulted Lil Rod while on P. Diddy's private yacht. This is a photo of Cuba Gooding Jr. with his arm around Lil Rod smirking. P. Diddy's future is unknown, but the likelihood of federal charges being brought against him for sex trafficking are extremely high. Follow to stay updated. P. Diddy has been allegedly arrested. The photo on the left is P. Diddy's alleged mugshot. On the right, we have a real photo of P. Diddy. But look at all the inconsistencies on the face, the shape of the eyebrows, the shape of the ears. The eyes don't match. If you look at the photo of P. Diddy, there is clearly a mole right below his eye on his cheek. Look at the man on the left. There is no mole. This is a clone. P. Diddy is a billionaire. He has the resources and money to create clones of himself. Do not fall for this. This is not P. Diddy.